we need to get the evidence. We can't just have a plan now. That plan must be actioned. So where I've chosen a combined approach, I now need to go and select my samples and test the controls. And we have chosen a substantive approach, or once I have tested my controls in a combined approach, I need to go and select my samples and perform my substantive procedures. It's no longer just saying I'm going to do it. It's actually going and doing it and gathering the evidence. Guys, really important, the evidence that I gather must be sufficient. There must be enough to back my opinion on whether the financials or that balance or transaction is free from material misstatements. And it must be appropriate, so it must be relevant to the assertion I'm trying to get evidence over. So, for example, if I'm trying to test that they are not understating revenue, my test, my evidence must prove that they are not understating or that they are understating. But it mustn't go and test that they're overstating because then it's not relevant to the risk or to the assertion I'm trying to get evidence over. And it must be from a reliable source. So whether it be from a hard copy source document, so an actual source document, instead of being verbally told something, or it's from an actual external confirmation. It's again not just a verbal confirmation. And obviously, if it is an original document, it's going to be better than if it's a printed or photocopied document. Okay, so just in terms of that. And also like the source, if you're just asking management, it's not necessarily the most reliable because management, they put the financials together. So they're going to tell you what they think they've done is right. Okay, so reliable, written, better than oral, external is better than internal evidence, so from somebody outside corroborating what the inside people are saying. Okay, and then it's now about getting this evidence, getting the substantive evidence, getting the test of controls. Okay, so we're focusing here today. Before we get into the actual test of controls, I want to take you to ISA 500, the audit evidence standard, where we will get some examples of the types of audit procedures in our paragraphs A2 and A14 to A25. Okay, it's also going to discuss what I've just mentioned about the audit evidence being relevant, reliable, and sufficient. So let's open ISA 500. So here we go. I'm going to go straight to the requirements with regards to sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. So, it says that we will design audit procedures to give us sufficient appropriate audit evidence and I've highlighted A1 to A25. So if we go there, A2 I said to you, it gives you those procedures and there you can see inspection, observation, confirmation, recalculation, reperformance, analytical procedures, and inquiry. Those are the ways we will go and get the evidence we need. Okay? But then I said to you, if we go to A14 to A24, we'll actually get a little bit more of how we go about using those verbs to get the evidence. Okay? Just as a note here, inquiry alone is not sufficient audit evidence. We have already seen that, guys in your ISA 330. So again, it's just reiterating it's not sufficient. Okay, let's just carry on through these just so you can see what I've discussed so far and then we'll get to 40, A14 to 24. 
just says we need to have sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to reduce audit risk. Sufficiency, measure of quantity. Do I have enough? Appropriateness, a measure of reliability and relevance. Okay. A8, I've just said, yeah. Corroborating from an independent source is going to give you higher level of assurance. Then the types of procedures we do, risk assessment, our further audit procedures, our test of controls and substantive. Okay, here we get to A14. Now they've gone and taken each of those verbs about how I can go and get evidence and explain them a little bit better. So they've said for inspection, you can go and examine records or documents. So it's a little bit more in detail looking as opposed to just, oh, there it is, and that's it done, which would be more considered an observation where you are looking at a process or a procedure, not going in for detail in a document. That would be inspection. External confirmations, just getting a confirmation from a third party is a type of audit evidence. Recalculating any mathematical accuracy. Reperforming any control that they've done, we could potentially reperform. So note when I say reperforming, I've gone and linked it to a control. The others all above, I haven't linked it to a control because when you do a test of detail and you inspect the document, you would be getting evidence substantively. But if you're inspecting a document for a control being done, authorization or being pre-numbered, you're testing a control. Observing, you could go and observe something to get substantive test of detail evidence and you could observe something to test the control. Do they have access controls? Go and observe that. Reperforming, we only reperforming if there is a control. So this is only going to be a test of control. Analytical procedures, this is a substantive procedure. It's one type of them and it just says to you, you're looking at relationships, you are analyzing and, investi and investigating the reasonableness of data. Inquiry could be for both, where you're seeking information from knowledgeable persons. Information to be used when looking for a management expert, which is eight, all the way onwards. We are going to do in two weeks' time, so don't worry about that. Over here, there's just some extra points on relevance and reliability, so you can quickly have a look there. Relevance, look at the assertion and they give you some examples. Testing for overstatement in the existence or valuation, then you can't be going and looking for evidence to test for understatement. For reliability, independent sources are more reliable. If we obtain the information directly ourselves, it's more reliable than getting from somebody. If it's writing, not oral, it's more reliable. Okay, and then if we just jump over to selecting items for testing, we're not testing everything, guys. That's why I said to you over here, We will select samples to do our tests. So, if we go and have a look at A52 to 56, it discusses the samples. And it says here, you could have all items or specific items or use audit sampling. Okay, and then just to see, just some examples of how you would go about selecting maybe higher value items, maybe significant risks, maybe over a certain amount, or we could use audit sampling, which is ISA 530. The nice thing is that you won't have to discuss how you've gone about selecting your sample. You will just say, select a sample, and then do your audit testing. Okay, all right, so now, having looked at the standard, let's actually go into test of controls.